This video is sponsored by Case Filters. Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Express Photography. Maybe there's a tool sitting on your Photoshop toolbar that's gathering dust and uh, it's just hiding there in the back of the shelf now and you don't really tend to use it very much. And I'm guessing that that is now the clone stamp. Um, historically, we use that an awful lot to try and remove things from frames and to tidy up compositions, uh, getting rid of things that we didn't want. Um, but we all know that it was somewhat flawed and was painstaking and took a lot of time. There's two new kids on the block in 2023 that have changed uh, cloning and erasing uh, exponentially. The, the dawn of the future has arrived. And in this video, I want to show you these two tools, how I use them all the time and why they are so important to your landscape photography. If we dive straight into my Photoshop here, I'm using the Photoshop beta, uh, which has been released recently. And one of the great tools that you will have heard an awful lot of talk about is the generative AI tool. And of course, you'll have seen videos on putting waterfalls in or putting flocks of birds into compositions and so forth. And that's not what I'm here to talk about. What I'm gonna talk about is using uh, the generative AI tool in conjunction with another Photoshop tool to do the best cloning, erasing, and uh, basically um, deleting of things we don't want or tidying up our compositions so it's perfect and seamless. If we look at my Photoshop here, we can see a photograph of Tom Heaton with his tripod doing a bit of vlogging in Iceland a couple of years ago. If there was ever a reason to invest in the beta version of Photoshop, it is to remove Tom Heaton from your compositions. And as you can see, it's done an amazing job of making it believe that Tom was never there actually. And this composition, if we zoom right in, there is no evidence of uh, what we used to see with cloning, repetitive things where you basically copied and pasted pixels or content from one part of a frame to another. So it's really incredible the way that we can do this now. And I'm going to uh, dive into a new photograph to show you exactly how I do this type of thing. So this is a lovely little photograph of an ivy leaf uh, up against a stone wall um, that I just photographed at the weekend here. And um, I really, really like it. It's shot with the Fuji GFX. Um, I'm using uh, one of my case circular polarizers to control the amount of shine I'm getting on the leaf. Um, but you will notice if I zoom in, the leaf itself is super, super sharp and detailed, but there's a few little stray out of focus leaves on the bottom of the frame. And I want to use a combination of generative AI and uh, one of the other uh, tools in Photoshop to try and get rid of this and to make it as perfect as I possibly can. So when you open the beta version of Photoshop these days, you have this new uh, panel at the bottom, which is kind of like a working uh, selection and cloning palette. I'm going to grab just the, um, the uh, lasso tool and paint quickly around that leaf there. And you'll see we now have this little pop-up that says generative fill. I'm going to press that. And if you wanted to generate something, you would put in some keywords there, but obviously I don't. I just want to generate fill. Um, now this is a bit like it was with uh, content aware fill, but these tools are using AI to look at what's around it and make as good a job as it possibly can. Now, one of the cool things about the generative AI tool is that it creates three versions for you. And you can basically scroll through those and see which one you like best. I kind of like the first version and you'll see that it opens or it creates a smart object here on uh, above the original file, uh, just with a little selection on it. If I select the background image again, and do the same thing, just copying around that leaf and creating a new fill. What will happen is we'll just keep repeating this process over all the bits of the frame that we want to try and get rid of. And again, we have three versions of that. And actually, I'm not crazy keen on any of those. You will see that uh, we've lost that twig completely. Um, so I'm actually going to erase that one 
and maybe we can try it again. So there we have it. We have a quite a good uh, little selection there and it looks to me like that middle version is the best so far. And what I'll do is I'll just work through a couple of other little areas quickly just to get rid of them and then we'll talk about the before and after. I'd like to thank Case Filters for their continued support of our work and would recommend anyone looking to upgrade their filter systems to check out the great range of options available from traditional holders through to the fully magnetic systems. I exclusively use case filters because of their exceptional quality and durability. They never let me down. Click on the link in the description below and use the code Alistair for a 5% discount. So you'll see I've ended up doing three uh, generative fill selections here. And if I just select all of those and create a group for them, if I turn that group on and off, you will see that we now have some of those, uh, all three of those uh, areas have been replaced with generated fill. However, I'm still not 100% happy with a couple of things in this frame. So I'm going to start using a second tool, which is the remove tool. Now the remove tool lives up in our uh, general healing palette, I guess we would call it, um, which sits above uh, the clone tool in the tool palette. And we have some of the familiar ones we've been using for a few years now, the spot healing brush tool, the healing brush tool, the patch tool, the content aware move tool. And um, I think the remove tool now is pretty much going to be the one of choice. Um, there's a couple of, um, what I'll do is I'll create a clone, uh, a stamp layer here. I'm just using the Tony Kuiper palette uh, for a little shortcut because everything that's under there, I'm somewhat happy with. So I'm just going to use the little arrays to start tidying up some of these areas. Now, if I use it to scroll down here, you can see it starts to tidy up some of these little flaws and I'm happy with that. I, I like my images to be tidy. See, there's another little out of focus leaf in the corner there. And we will use the remove tool. And again, it just seamlessly starts to create. There's a little thing there that I thought I might get rid of. And obviously we can just keep going around this image and now it's becoming more like a spot removal tool almost. I'm just getting rid of these little spots here. So basically, if I now um, drag this down into that group as well, this gives us the image uh, before all of the things were removed and then after. And what is really clear to me is that sometimes in the field, it's not possible to get the subject that you want without things straying into the edges, either branches or foliage or out of focus areas. And it was impossible for me to get this photograph without including some of the out of focus foliage. There was no way I was going to start pulling leaves off uh, just to tidy up my composition. And I would actively discourage anybody who thinks that's a good idea. So at the end of the day, we're now in a position where we can make our images the way we imagine them to be using these two incredibly powerful tools that I just think are the future. I mean, this stuff is amazing. This is AI. Adam Gibbs and I talked about it last week. Is AI going to kill landscape photography? No, it's not. It's going to make everything better for us or it has the capacity to make things better for us. These AI tools in Photoshop are so incredible now. And I truly believe that the remove tool in conjunction with the generative AI tool is actually going to make cloning a thing of the past. And I wouldn't be surprised to see cloning just disappear at some point. It's just no longer necessary.
Thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this little tutorial on these tools to be of value to you. Dive into the comments. Tell me what you think. Do you still use the, a, uh, the, the clone tool? Uh, I don't believe I've used it in years. Maybe you still do. Tell me why you do. That'd be cool. Um, if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification. And of course, uh, we really appreciate you stopping by to check out this content. Bye for now.